134 and the back was 10 inches. We're doing that correct. Okay. So what I'm going to do is after this rafter, 134. Do you know, that wasn't real fluent. So I went 12 and three quarters. So I need to mark, in, I'm gonna go inch and three quarters back and that should fit. 12 and three quarters of soffit, minus inch and a half subfascia and a quarter inch just to cheat. And then what we'll do is take all the blocks off the other side. I think we're going to be able to rip these and pretty easily grab our uh, all of our other blocking. Yep. Now, before you actually cut, are we doing that? Oh, I have tons, dude. From the end of the tail, I have 20 inches. Okay. But with this, we can we'll be able to cut them down. Okay. And so I can get a full block that we could bird block, and then I can get a two by six block for the ridge. So basically every bay, we have enough for one top and one bottom, gotcha. if that makes sense. Yeah. But what I was asking for this side, are we actually cutting oh. the thing? I know you might want to do that for the video, so I was just trying to let you do it. I got what you're saying. Um, so in that case, would it make more sense to just do this? And Yeah, well, no, we'll, I, th I think I'll leave that in the video. Yeah, yeah, we're just... Ow. Man, I have just been getting splinters. So if I do this, we have block, block, and then the bird's mouth, I'm going to take a little bit more out because of the sheeting. And I'm going to exaggerate it. That makes sense? Yeah. Are you just saying that? Yeah. So I'm going to no. take all of that. Yeah. Should I even go more? Because I eyeballed that. So That's you're just going to basically take... Yeah, and let the it hang out, in. Let it sit and let it hang in. And then this will cut off. Yep. Yeah. I think that's probably fine. Okay. I mean, that's framing. So you could cut this side of the line. Yeah. Give yourself another eighth. I think we're fine. Okay. And then the rest of them, we'll just put the blocks on your end. Okay. Just a couple of things to explain. Laid out the bird's mouth for the tail, but the back doesn't need tails because it's over the vaulted living room. Instead, it's going to sister onto other rafters. They're going to just lap each other at that wall. I went ahead and ordered all the rafter lengths as though they needed tails because I knew I needed to cut my bird blocks out of it. And then we're going to try to use up our scrap for our ridge blocks. And that's going to make a whole lot more sense as we go through the series. We overcut enough for the scrap to fall out. I'm going to put a video up above. And I went past the line because it needs to hang down past that sheeted wall over there with the openings by the stairway. That might make it a little. I have, yeah. yeah. And then I can kind of pull right up to that. We should just have two squares up here. I can go get the other one. I'm, I'm good enough to use a small square. Okay. Just saying. Since there are no tails, we're gonna get two blocks out of each of these rafters. So we're just taking that off each end and then we're gonna mark our pattern and cut them. That way all of our blocks are cut as we go. Of course, later we're gonna have to rip them to the heels. That was really cool. Okay, so I'm right on my line. Do you have room if I go there? Yeah. So there's nothing rocket science-y about this process. One thing you'll notice is that we did not frame any of our interior walls. That was deliberately so we could cut our rafters up here. 
Okay. Which is the flattest spot on the job that. site. Basically, yeah, you go good. I'll yet, just let mine flop off. People. Schedule was weird. We just had to keep going. As long going. as I don't go past my Second, line, it don't matter. we just run one pair, two pairs of these jackass saw horses. So we're only cutting like six or seven raptors at a time. But that's okay because we're cutting in batches. We're cutting for the back of this roof, then the section in the top middle that'll have tails, then the section to the left there because those are shorter rafters. Then the following day, we went downstairs and we just made it work. We cut rafters for the garage. What we're trying to do is we're trying to just minimize how much we have to handle the material. You notice in the background, we've got the forklift. It brings the material to us. We can crown it. We can mark patterns. We can then cut them all. And then we're going to strategically stack them on the floor where they're not in our way because we are going to set, we are going to set these rafters. We're going to stack the roof off of, did I say ladders? Rafters. We're going to stack the roof off of a ladder. You'll see that. Doesn't take very long. No need to build scaffolding. You can probably build the thing quicker than we can set up scaffolding. So anyway, we'll get into that more in the next video. For this video, it's just repetitive and rhythm. All you have to do as the person running the saw is make straight cuts. Now, one thing I would say is when you cut your pattern, cut it like a 16th short because when you start marking lines, everything's going to grow a little bit. On the other hand, they're all going to be the same and the pattern will be the smallest. Big deal. All right, so we're going to lay out the bird's mouth and then we're going to show how we make an adjustment for hangers. So we have our angle and our seat cut. This is all we're going to do. We want our seat cut to be the heel to land right there. I'm just going to mark that. 29.16 degrees. Okay, that's it. P for Pat Hearn. Pat Hearn. All right, let me cut this and then I can help you out. Cut the pattern. Oh yeah, cut the pattern, yeah. Sorry, I kind of freaked out there. When I cut this, I'm gonna cut the horizontal or the level cut, then the plumb cut in one scrap. I wanna minimize how much I have to handle the scrap. Do you need the big square? No, I can use the little one. No, I can use the little one too. Can you? Yes. Okay, then yeah, you guys, I guess, uh, I guess, I guess, uh, I guess, uh, we got lots of room, so however you, yeah, you, you probably got a little bit more room on this. Man, Nikki made, uh, I don't really know what it's called, but she gets turkey meatballs, asparagus, um, but like pickled ginger. Soy sauce, something else. I can't remember what it is. Like a, like almost like a chipotle drizzle. Oh, nice. Yeah, and then um, sweet potatoes. Yeah. And I like the asparagus, a little crispy. Yeah. It really hits the spot. Do you need this? I'm good. I do. No, I can use a little square. Yeah, so we're having that again tonight. Nice. I'm trying to think, I kind of want to, I got to get my hair cut. Even though I have like a ton of beer at home, none of it is actually stuff that I'm interested in. Yeah. I've been wanting to go to Bent Vine and get their, uh, their triple. IPA, but they look, they've been closed. Like, I, every time I drive by there, their sign's never open. So it's like, huh, I wonder if something happened. I yeah. don't see any reason not to stack them on the floor next to them. Okay. Yeah, I haven't been there in, in like four, maybe three or four years. Yeah.
When you're cutting rafters with a partner, just be mindful of your partner. If he yanks on a rafter while you're cutting, that can be bad or vice versa. So we're always kind of, you're paying attention to the line. We're letting the blocks not hit the ground. We don't want to bend over. It's a waste of time. But we're also paying attention to each other. And just to be completely fair, it's always a little bit of a race. <laughs> it's a good natured race. Now, I didn't win there because I had the bird's mouth. I just cut my blocks. Kyle was cutting his blocks and his plum cut as he went. So really, he won. But remember, if he wins, then we win. So I don't know. Yeah, teamwork makes for dream work. Something like that. Okay, so same thing. On to the next batch. We're just, so the rafters on the left, those go where the windows are on the top left. It's just a little roof there. It's going to overframe. Where I'm standing, there's actually going to be a glue lamb that follows the front wall across. And then, of course, the main rafters sit on the back wall without tails. They kind of have tails where they lap the other rafters. The front wall has tails. Remember, the soffit is already pre-built. The other thing to, to notice is that we have a minimum amount of bracing up here because we're not all braced yet. <laughs> so we had two braces on the rake walls. Then we set the ridge. Once that's locked together, we can take one of those braces down. There's not going to be high winds that come through and just whip this thing, so we're safe. When it comes time to actually set rafters, then we'll go through and we'll straighten out those walls again. So it's not that we don't brace, it's that we pick when to brace and how to brace. Anyway, you can see now that as we're cutting material, our 2x12 blocks are building up. I guess I was wrong. These rafters are from the other side of the front roof. Ah, what do I know? What do I know? Hey, by the way, I'll put a link in the description. Those are the Jackass Sawhorses. We've been using these since I believe 2017. Not this specific pair, but this design. I, I think I still have the originals. They were made out of Warehouser Edge Gold. They're pretty trashed now from being in the weather. But uh, you make them out of Advantech, leave them outside full time, and they last a long, long time. Once you have the pattern cut, it's easy to cut them in the future. Anyway, good rainy day work. I'm pushing real good! Actually, you know what? I'll blitz through these blocks real quick. Okay, one. Now, these scraps are going to end up getting ripped about five and a half for the ridge. So that's why I marked the 22.7. Uh, the, the, the actual bay is 22 and a half because we're trying to put on center. You can get away with cutting the blocks 22 and 3 eighths because things always grow. So anyway. Also notice that I am safely cutting using the short side of the scrap because watch how it opens. So it's just a balance between, in my case, my left hand and my right hand on the saw is as I push with the saw, that takes a required amount of force, but only a certain amount. You counteract that with your left hand opening up the cut, and that's why you can do that safely. The other beautiful thing about these Metabo saws, they have brakes. I think all these cordless saws now have brakes. Awesome. Now we're just getting into the rhythm. Throwing the scrap out the window. We know nobody's down there. There's our little scrap pile until we can get our little dump truck in. So we're just do it all as you go. I've learned that one the hard way over the years. Yeah, so 95 and a quarter. So I'm wondering if we can't get two out of each of these. Yeah, so I'm gonna go 10. I just wanna try out this saw. Then, crazy thing. To keep things simple when I order, I tend to order all of the same material. I know I'm gonna use my cutoffs as blocking, small jacks, backing inside the house later. It all gets used. This Makita XGT saw is a beast. A really good saw. Dude, I think you're gonna like using that. I know it's heavier, but it is like. Okay, I was wrong. The rafters on the left, <laughs> that's the main roof. I was thinking they looked a little long. The rafters that we're cutting now are all the little guys for that left hand uh, front dormer, where you can see the forklift still. The cutoffs, 
will get used for the sleeper valleys. Like I mentioned, it's going to get used up for blocking, for some jacks. All that stuff ends up getting used up. We do not like to waste wood. You saw some of it go into the scrap pile. That's because we know that at a certain point, you just have to get rid of it. We do our best. Uh, we'll give it to neighbors. They want to burn it low, like little campfires. We'll take some of it home for ourselves, you know, do the weekend fire. Um, other than that, there's just a certain amount that has to has to be disappeared, as they say. <laughs> Who's they? I told you. Then you'd have to be disappeared. <laughs> ah, man, it's early. I'm trying to do this stuff before work. The life of a YouTuber. It starts at 4.30 in the morning, and it ends like 8 o'clock at night when I fall asleep. And in the middle, you got to go work. I got to go lay some decking in the heat. I'm not looking forward to that. But such is life. Hey, it could be worse. It could be a lot worse. Remember, don't complain. Nobody wants to hear it. If you do, then uh, maybe I'll start a whole new, new YouTube channel where I can just complain full time. Just kidding. And that concludes part one. Or part two, I don't know what we're on. First step is rafter cutting. And one thing I neglected to mention earlier is that to calculate our rafter lengths, we just went ahead and measured the rake walls since the beam was already set. We're gonna double check that anyway, and then we're gonna compensate if we've made any mistakes. But there it is. Get all of our rafters cut, and then we can just go into stacking mode. So what you're seeing here, well, we'll get into more detail on, in, on, we'll get, stay tuned for the next video. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm tired. We'll see you in the next video. Hey, hit that like and subscribe button.